We have in the laboratory here developed a new treatment involving um, gene therapy, which is a new technology uh, being developed in medicine. We are treating a disease which is called choroideremia, and this disease affects young men. Uh, it presents in childhood, and it causes progressive loss of sight and eventual blindness by the time the patients are in their 40s. So the disease was first described over 100 years ago in 1872, and there are lots of patients affected by it worldwide. The disease is caused by a missing gene. A gene is a part of the DNA, which is the, the code that, uh, that we have in our bodies to make cells work correctly. The DNA is missing a certain gene known as REP1. And that gene is on the X chromosome, which is one of the parts of the DNA in, in, in all cells in the body. Because it's on the X chromosome, the disease affects primarily men. Uh, it causes sight loss in men and presents in childhood. So gene therapy is a technique we use where we artificially make the missing gene and we use a virus to put it back into the cells that need the gene in order to survive. In the case of the retina, which is the lining of the back of the eye, these patients are going blind because the cells are degenerating. So what we plan to do and what we are doing in this clinical trial is we are injecting the gene back into the cells and we're using the virus to carry the gene to infect the gene into the cells and then hopefully preserve vision in these patients who've got this terrible disease. Croideremia affects about one in 50,000 people. So that is a fairly rare disease, but it's prevalent worldwide. So in the UK, there may be 1,000 people affected. Uh, worldwide, there may be 100,000, possibly more, because in many countries, the disease is underreported. What's unique about it is that it's instantly recognizable to most eye specialists. So if we can look into the back of the eye and we can see a disease where we know the genetic cause by its appearance, it's much easier to develop a gene therapy treatment because of course we can instantly collect a load of patients without needing to do complicated genetic testing because we can sort of see what the disease is at the very beginning. So far we have injected six patients, treated six patients, but we have a, um, approval to treat a further six which we'll be doing later this year. The preliminary results of the study are very promising but any primary study on something new like this is designed around safety first of all and once we're happy that the treatment is safe we can then expand the trial to include more people and of course look at more complicated outcomes of their vision. It's altogether one year a period of when we're actually treating the patients and then we follow them up for two years because the degeneration is quite slow so we won't know necessarily instantly if it's worked we need to wait a couple of years where we can compare the rate of degeneration in the treated eye to the degeneration in the untreated eye uh, like a control and we, we estimate by looking at the, the data on the rate of degeneration that we'll know within two years if we've been successful in stopping it. Well we engineered a viral vector which we designed in our laboratories and tested um, in the University of Oxford uh, and the vector which we designed has to be made in a certain way to enable it to be injected into patients. Obviously you can't just inject viruses into patients because there could be some toxic effects. We're very fortunate here in Oxford in that we have a, a clinical biomanufacturing facility which is approved uh, by the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority, the MHRA in the UK, which allows us to bring in, store and develop these very complicated gene therapy products uh, in a way that wouldn't be available in many other academic centres in the UK.